In this video I want to talk about different result plots in SOLIDWORKS simulation. So what I've done here is I've calculated a torsion on a, a can. It's a, a regular uh, soft drink can and I've put the torsion on it already and I'm going to show you first the, the displacement. And what I'm going to do then is show several result plots in SOLIDWORKS which you can use to judge whether or not your product will fail. So I've, uh, I've taken this can, I've done that because there's been some uh, good videos on analyzing the stresses on a can from Mr. Mark French here from Purdue University. I've got it open on this tab. So here it is, it's a more circle on a can. He shows here that when you twist the can, I can run through this uh, simulation or through this film a little. When you twist the can, uh, he shows the can sometimes too. Right now I seem to not be able to find it. Uh, but when you twist the can it starts to wrinkle. I think he shows the can here at the end. Let me see. I'll play this. this 45 degrees. So here. Here's the can. He twisted it in the same way and you see a 45 degrees buckle in the can. And in this video Mr. Mark French shows how this can will buckle and how you can analyze with more circle why it will buckle under an angle of 45 degrees but you can also use SOLIDWORKS simulation result plots so you can either use more circle or SOLIDWORKS simulation result plots to to verify that result so when I look at the different plots I've created over here first I created the, the first principal stress plot in this plot how I did that is define stress plot and then I took the first principal stress and then show as vector plot so then you get uh, an image like this I, I changed the default settings a little to get uh, nicer results on my screen but that's the way you get this first principal stress is the maximum uh, tensile stress that's in a product so that's always the first principal stress the second principal stress will be rectangular to that and the third principal stress will also be rectangular and will be then the smallest stress and the smallest stress will usually be a compressive stress because that's negative as you can see the first principal stress is a tensile stress and therefore positive and this one stands rectangular to that and is in the thickness in the wall thickness of this part so it's not very useful when i look at the third principal stress you can see a compression in the scan and this compression will lead to buckling of the can because the wall thickness is so small it's only a quarter of a millimeter as is shown in this video as well in the beginning and the buckling, the buckling you can see over here exactly under 45 degrees so you can predict it either with more circle like is shown in this video that I've opened here or you can take SOLIDWORKS results plots usually you look at the Van Mises stress but in this case for a can, a can will not fail because of high Van Mises stress it will fail because of buckling and because it's not failing due to a high stress exceeding the tensile stress of a material then you, you'll have to look at the principal stresses of a product so SOLIDWORKS gives you the, the possibility to do that and the can will then wrinkle in this direction that you see over here and you see exactly the same thing happening in the video. So there's a lot more stress plots you can define and they can all be very useful for several situations. So usually the Van Mises stress is shown for ductile materials and if you have a brittle metal then you'll usually take the stress intensity. So the, the Tresca failure principle. You can also plot the shear stresses and plot the stresses in x y z direction that will correspond to this coordinate system over here but the first second and third principal stress will correspond to the the principal stresses of a material and the way that it's done is then shown in this video so hopefully that was clear clearing up a little bit on the result plots in solidworks simulation